This is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Macy Marie. First at four, the historic Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris caught fire earlier today. And several dramatic videos and photos like you're going to see here spread across social media. And as you can see, the fire engulfed the roof and it spread all over the 900 year old cathedral. You can also see massive amounts of smoke billowing up from that roof. Most of the cathedral was damaged. No injuries or deaths were reported. We do not know what caused the fire at this time, but authorities say it may potentially involve renovation works being carried out at the site. Police have forced people to move from nearby buildings, and we hope to have much more on this story coming up at 5. Kentucky State Police troopers say a man was found dead inside a Laurel County house fire. The home caught fire last night. WIMT's Hannah Reynolds has the latest. Kentucky State Police say Lily firefighters were dispatched to this house behind me on Sugar Lane Road in Laurel County around 730 on Sunday evening. Troopers say when firefighters got to the house, they started to extinguish the flames from inside the home. After flames were put out, firefighters found the body of 58 year old Charles Barton of Lily. Kentucky State Police were called to the scene shortly after and began their death investigation. Uh, the cause and origin of the fire has not been determined yet or his exact cause of death. Troopers say Barton's body was taken to the Kentucky State Medical Examiner's Office where an autopsy is being performed today. In Laurel County, Hannah Reynolds, WYMT Mountain News. Now the troopers say they expect to have the preliminary cause of death later on today. And it's been a chilly day across the mountains, but at least we are starting to see that sunshine start to return in some spots. You'll notice here on our Whitesburg cam looking into downtown Whitesburg that we are seeing those clouds starting to break and the blue skies starting to show. And as we look over into Jackson right now, we're still hanging on to those mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures near 42 degrees, feeling like 37. That wind kind of picking up at times. Definitely a chilly day. And as we look at those temperatures really across our area, we're seeing kind of a big temperature gradient down into the South Cumberland Valley. We're seeing those low to mid 50s in some spots while the rest of us are in those low to mid 40s the further you go north and that's also why we have that frost advisory issue tonight. We'll get into that in just a second. But satellite and radar, you can see those clouds really starting to clear. They've cleared from the Cumberland Valley first, so they're seeing a little bit more sunshine, which is why they have been able to warm up a little bit more. But we do have a frost advisory out for a good portion of our area as we head into the overnight hours and into early Tuesday morning. Good news is that we warm back up very quickly as we head into your Tuesday high pressure sets up as we head into the middle of the work week as well, which will bring sunshine back into the forecast. We'll break down that full forecast coming up in just a little bit, Macy. All right, thank you, Paige. A cabin at a state park in southern Kentucky was destroyed after a tree was blown onto it during yesterday's storms. Fortunately, the family of six who were vacationing in the cabin were able to get out safely. Adam Bernstein shows us that damage. H.M. Bottom, the emergency manager here in Russell County, says it was a family of six on vacation from Louisville who had rented this cabin before a tree fell down, knocking it over with the family still inside. The cabin is located within the Lake Cumberland State Resort Park in an area that is now closed off to public due to safety concerns. According to Bottom, first responders got the call Sunday afternoon that a tree had fallen on a cabin with a family of six inside, including children. The tree had ended up knocking the cabin off its foundation, causing it to topple over almost completely onto its side. When first responders arrived, most of the family had fortunately made it out of the house, thanks to neighbors who had jumped in to help and gotten them out through a window. It's very lucky because, you know, the cabin, once the tree had had uh, went into the cabin, it, it took it off the foundation and behind it was, uh, it was quite of a, a drop. And that's kind of what we were concerned uh, mainly was whether it was going to go over the hill or not. Now, because the cabin sits on such a steep ledge, structural engineers are coming out to assess the damage and also figure out how to best deconstruct the cabin safely. In Russell County, meteorologist Adam Berniston, WKYT. The emergency manager says Sunday's storms also knocked out power to many others in the county, but fortunately there were no other major incidents of damage. 
And eastern Kentucky was not the only area experiencing severe weather yesterday. A woman is recovering after being trapped inside her home in North Carolina during yesterday's severe weather. Officials say the woman was stuck inside her house as heavy rain and winds ripped through the area. Winds lifted the house from its foundation. The woman only sustained minor injuries and she's expected to be okay. The National Weather Service says it is too early to tell if there was a tornado in that area. President Trump is taking a fresh aim at Minnesota Congresswoman Ileana Omar today, accusing her of making anti-Semitic and other offensive statements. In a tweet, he accused Omar of controlling House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, saying Pelosi should look at the anti-Semitic and anti-Israel and ungrateful U.S. hate statements Omar has made. The Muslim lawmaker says she has faced an increase in death threats following a retweet from the president targeting her over a comment she made referencing 9-11. This is the clip President Trump tweeted about. Care was founded after 9-11 because they recognized that some people did something and that all of us were starting to lose access to our civil liberties. The president's not trying to incite violence against anybody. He's actually speaking out against it. In a tweet on Sunday night, Omar accused the president of encouraging hate speech, saying, we are all Americans. This is endangering lives. It has to stop. Omar has faced controversy before over perceived anti-Semitic anti comments. In February, she did apologize after suggesting American support for Israel is motivated by money from the Jewish lobby. The comments were condemned by members of both political parties, including by Nancy Pelosi. The Mueller report is expected to be made public on Thursday. The nearly 400-page report centers on the investigation into the possible collusion between President Trump's election campaign and Russia. That includes possible obstruction of justice, though many are pushing to see an unredacted copy of that 400-page report. It is basic instinct to look at your tax refund as a windfall, but that may not be the best idea. It's okay to treat yourself a little bit, maybe buy that new coat you've been eyeing or go out to a nice dinner, but you don't want to blow your entire refund on impulse purchases. And today at 530 right here on YMT, we have some great ideas on what to do with your tax refund, responsible ways to get yourself out of debt or thinking about saving some of that money. If you have not finished filing those taxes, your time, well, it's almost up. It is April 15th, the deadline to turn in your tax returns for 2018. The paperwork is due and the IRS says as many as 50 million taxpayers have yet to file. If you're unable to get everything in order before midnight, the IRS recommends filing for an extension. That will prevent taxpayers from paying late penalties, but it will not provide more time to pay taxes, tax money that is owed. Most tax-related questions can be answered by going to irs.gov. Now heading over to Wall Street on this Monday afternoon, the Dow closes down more than 27 points. Schools, businesses, and community organizations across the region are pushing full steam ahead this week to revisit the way the region views learning. Remake Learning Days is an initiative that was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but has now traveled to nine regions, including here in eastern Kentucky. The initiative brings students and their parents together for a hands-on experience in the field of science, technology, engineering, art, and math. According to organizers with BitSource and Remake Learning, more than 70 events are happening in eastern Kentucky this week. Many have been catered to practice STEAM with celebrating the region. So many of the schools are showcasing these programs that they're offering and um, so parents can become more aware. It's also important for us to preserve the culture of our region and so many of our events have um, embraced the Appalachian culture. Remake Learning Days will continue through April 20th. For a full schedule, you can visit our website, wymt.com. Today marks the 107th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. More than 1,500 passengers and crew of the British luxury liner, the RMS Titanic, died when it sank on April 15, 1912. The ship was making its maiden voyage from Southampton, England to New York City when it hit an iceberg and sank about 370 miles south of Newfoundland. It's considered to be one of the worst maritime disasters in history. Not only have scientists and scholars been interested in researching the disaster,
but it's inspired songs, films, and even a Broadway musical. And straight ahead on First Step 4, a woman goes above and beyond to help an injured canine find out how you can help just ahead. And chilly conditions continue tonight, but for how long? We'll break down that full forecast in just a few short minutes.